the man in our gospel prays that he will see. And this is a good thing for us to do. Jesus walks by, and if we do not ask him for what we need and what we want, then we won't get it. Or, if we ask, but we don't really want it, we won't get it. There is a necessary cooperation with God's grace. God gives us the desire before we have it, but we need to cooperate. And so this man was blind. He wanted to see. God gave him that desire, but he needed to call out. Even when people told him to be silent, even when people said, shh, don't bother him, he called out. We need to desire with our hearts. Now, when we look to our first reading, and if you have not read the book of Revelation, or if you have not read it in years, I highly recommend read the first seven letters, the letters that are sent to the seven churches. We have one of them in our reading today. John to the seven churches in Asia, grace and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne. I heard the Lord saying to me, to the angel. And that's another thing to remember. We're not alone. Not only do we have a guardian angel, but St. Patrick's Church has a guardian angel. So, let us ask our angel to help us to pray as we should. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write this. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks in the midst of the seven gold lampstands says this. I know your works, your labors, and your endurance, and that you cannot tolerate the wicked. You have tested those who call themselves apostles, but are not, and have discovered that they are imposters. In other words, you're doing a good job. Moreover, you have endurance and have suffered for my name, and you have not grown weary. Now, when we're asking for the gift to see, we need to ask God, to help us to see into our own hearts and into our own lives. Is that true of me? Have I labored? Have I endured? Have I tolerated false uh, apostles? Moreover, you have endurance and have suffered for my name, and you have not grown weary. Have I grown weary? Have I suffered for Jesus' name? Or have I simply been quiet? Have I applied the teaching of Jesus to the various aspects of my life? Then he says, yet I hold this against you. You have lost the love you had at first. That may be the core of the message. Have I lost the love that I had at first? And, and in this, we need to be very careful. I tell this to, to married couples, well, the couples that are getting married. I say our relationships go through ups and downs. And we know from spiritual teachings that we have the dark night of the senses and the dark night of the soul. We want to make sure that when we go into the dark night of the senses or when we go back and when we go into the dark night of the soul, we don't go running after our previous love. It's like a married couple. They love each other, they get married, they go on a honeymoon, and man, this is the greatest thing in the world. They come home and a year or two years, when I was first ordained, 
They figured it took five years. Now they figure it takes less than one year for the couple to, to go and, and hit a bottom. How life has changed just in our society. But the same is true in our relationship with God. God brings us forward and he brings us through these downtimes. When we go into this downtime, we need to be looking at the greater love that is in front of us and not the more emotional love that was behind us. In a married couple, if they, they start to go down and have problems and they try to run back to where they were at their honeymoon, they're going to get lost in this cycle. It's kind of an emotional cycle. However, God's plan for marriage and God's plan for us is that when we have difficulty feeling this love, we need to use our volition. We need to choose a greater love. We need to dedicate ourselves more to this new love. And it will have an emotional component and it will be much better. But we don't want to, we want to not lose the love that we had at first, but we need to have a mature love of God. We need to have a mature love of Jesus mature love of the Holy Spirit. Realize how far you have fallen, repent, and do the works you did at first. It's another good, if you want a good thing to remember, if in terms of the saints, if we want what they have, we need to do what they do. If I am not doing what the saints did, I will not have what they have. So repent and do the works you did at first, otherwise I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Wow. So your homework for the next seven days. Go and read these seven letters and, and ask the Lord for sight to open your eyes so that we can all see what do I need to work on? Because we're getting really close to Advent. And for Advent, a lot of people say, I'm going to make a, a New Year's resolution. Or at Lent, they say, well, I'm, I'm going to do this for Lent. We should do the same for Advent. Advent is the beginning of the church's liturgical year. What resolutions do I want to make for this new year? And then once a week or once a month, let's look at that resolution and see, am I following it? Is my love deepening? Am I doing the works that I did at first? 